George Jackson, age 29, California Adult Authority inmate A63837, imprisoned January 12, 1960, offence second degree robbery. Convicted of stealing $72 from a petrol station, Jackson had a juvenile record. He was advised to plead guilty to get a lighter sentence. Sentence one year to life. Term served 11 years, seven months, seven years in solitary confinement. One to life means the convict is eligible for parole each year, subject to the judgment of a parole board. Jackson was refused parole eight times. January 1970, charged with the murder of a prison guard. Future if convicted, death row. With two fellow prisoners, Jackson allegedly killed a prison guard in reprisal for the shooting of other convicts. The three, George Jackson, Fleeter Drumgo and Jean Cliché, became known as the Soledad brothers. August 21st, 1971, San Quentin. Three guards and two prisoners killed in an alleged escape attempt. George Jackson shot dead. So they're the two who really fired the first shot and they hit Jonathan first. And a lot of the shooting inside the van was done by the assistant district attorney at the time, Gary Thomas. When one of the convicts went down, the gun fell on the floor, he picked it up and started firing, killing the, you know, the other inmates inside. When the gunfire ended, Jonathan Jackson, William Christmas, and James McLean were dead. Rochelle McGee was wounded, as was one of the female jurors. Assistant DA Gary Thomas suffered a gunshot to his spinal cord and would be paralyzed from the waist down for life. In the frenzy of violence, the shotgun under the neck of Judge Harold Haley was triggered, killing him. When a shotgun goes off in someone's face, you can imagine how the, the, the kind of destruction and uh, the gruesome effect of that, and so it was, it was quite a shocking scene. I'm saying that there was no conspiracy, that Jonathan, a 17-year-old man-child, was working according to the dictates of his own mind. George Jackson would later declare that he was proud of his brother Jonathan's military action, adding, he was the true revolutionary the black communist guerrilla in the highest state of development. I'd be the last one to say that Jonathan uh, had suicide in mind. I'm certain that Jonathan felt that uh, the police would have some concern, would give some concern to the lives of those five civilians. I'm thinking that Jonathan was trying to demonstrate, trying to demonstrate to the public, to the people, just how uh, he felt that these problems should be solved. I think that he was led to believe that it was possible, even by George himself. I think George encouraged this. I think George put him up to it. It's very tragic that uh, he died at such, such a young age. I don't think many of us realized how exclusively focused he was on, on George. Nobody knows what he was thinking except Jonathan. But I think he did it for love of his brother and his country. He was trying to wake the people in this country up to the fact that black people had nothing. Because some of the weapons used by Jonathan Jackson were bought and registered by Angela Davis, law enforcement officials believed Davis was a co-conspirator. Davis fled and became a fugitive from justice, the object of a nationwide manhunt by the FBI. Her wanted poster listed charges of murder, kidnapping, and conspiracy. Well, I left because I uh, did not think there was any possibility of justice. I didn't have any choice. It wasn't something I wanted to do. It was something I had to do. You're driven by fear. It, absolutely. Absolutely. Two months later, 
the 26-year-old Davis was arrested in a New York City motel. After her return to California, she was taken to the Marin County Jail and locked up one floor above the courtroom where Jonathan Jackson had taken the hostages. The Jonathan Jackson thing uh, put us on the alert to specifically reinforced our belief that there are people out there, radicals out there, willing to do most anything in order to make their point or to free George Jackson. Think about the fact that uh, Ronald Reagan was the governor of California, Richard Nixon was the president of the U.S. The whole apparatus of the state was set up against me. Um, they had all of their resources and the FBI, the police, and they really meant to send me to the death chamber in order to make a point. It really didn't matter who I was or it was that I was a very uh, convenient figure to make a point that they would suppress any efforts at revolution and liberation.
I remember my father having to have guns at his disposal at all times because of the fact that at any moment uh, uh, someone we, we might expect to be attacked. The man who was at that time in con complete control of the city government, his name was Bull Connor, uh, would often get on the radio and make statements like, uh, 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 niggas have moved into a white neighborhood, uh, we better expect some bloodshed tonight. And sure enough, there would be bloodshed. In this period, the pain to remain the same outweighed the pain to change. I see that the time period uh, brought on an evolution and is contagious like um, hot coals. One ignites the next and the next and the next and the next. When you get tired enough is when you begin to want to sacrifice everything inside of you. The fear just leaves. This is what happened in this time period. Mm -hmm. 